Hello fellow aviators and Airbus fans. Today we're taking a close look at the Airbus A330 with a detailed cockpit visit in both the NEO and CEO versions of this airplane. So let's get on board and compare each variant of the A330 side by side. Before we get into the flight deck, let me show you how big this plane is. The vertical stabilizer stands 55 feet tall, 17 meters for European viewers. She can take off with over half a million pounds and fly for 7,000 nautical miles non-stop. Let's talk cockpit impressions and have a seat in the flight deck of the A330. Entering the A330 cockpit, you get the familiar Airbus layout. On the NEO, they kept the cockpit the same as on the CEO, which is already pretty advanced and had been continually updated by Airbus. The A330 cockpit feels a lot more spacious than the A320 cockpit, and the larger cockpit window makes it feel airy, a pretty nice office for a long haul flight. Here is a look inside the A320 for comparison. From the pilot's point of view, the cockpit is very similar with the avionics layout and side stick controls being almost identical to the A330. But you do notice the A320 cockpits being narrower and less deep than the A330 cockpits, especially behind the pilot area where the jump seats are. Let's take a look from the pilot's point of view. As you can see, visibility out front is phenomenal. Here's a look out front with the seat adjusted in the pilot's flying position. Let's pan our camera to take a look outside the two side windows. The panes of glass are pretty tall as well. They start from elbow height and extend past your head. The pilot's side glass also slides open, providing a last resort escape route or ventilation when you're on the ground. Airline flights are operated IFR and pilots spend as much time looking at instruments as they do outside the window. And without a yoke in the way, the Airbus's PFD and MFD are easy to scan. The right side on the PFD you got the huge attitude indicator with speed tape and altitude tape. On the left is your multi-function display, which supports a moving map and overlays with the weather radar. TCAS antennas also overlays traffic nearby. Let's pan over to the center where we see the engine instruments, the system displays, as well as the thrust levers, radios, and the FMS systems, the flight management system that helps calculate takeoff weights, takeoff thrusts, weight and balance, and fuel burn, navigational waypoints, and much more. And on the center part of the glare shield is your autopilot controls. The A330 jump seat space is very generous. There's two jump seats sitting side by side with room in the middle for cup holders. This is similar to the Boeing 777 and 787 cockpits. By comparison, the A320 is narrower and only sits one behind the first officer. If you're enjoying this video so far, drop a like and subscribe to my channel for more aviation content like this. Let's grab a seat in the cabin and experience a powerful takeoff in both the CEO and NEO variants of the A330. Our first takeoff here is at Helsinki Vanta Airport in Finnair's A330-300 powered by GE CF6 engines, producing up to 72,000 pounds of thrust on each side. Now let's watch a takeoff in the Airbus A330 NEO. It's a lot quieter, the sound pitch is different, but this is a night takeoff so visibility is less good. Let's explore the cabin of the A330. We start off in the economy section here on the A330 243 now flying on lease for Condor. This is the older common engine option version of the 330. Here we walk towards the back of the airplane towards the exit. Let's pan the GoPro out and get a good look at our contrail forming behind us. And we can also see the winglet gracing the skies high over the Atlantic Ocean. Let's walk towards the front of the plane. 
here in the lavatory, you can get a good look at our Rolls-Royce Trent 700 engine. The Trent 700 is the most sleek design of the Airbus A330 engine choices on the common engine option. It features a long cowl with a mixed exhaust. It's also the most popular power plant for the CEO and the best-selling Rolls-Royce aircraft engine. The Trent 700 produces up to 72,000 pounds of thrust, but is known to be a little more efficient than the other engines provided for the A330 CEOs. No video about the A330 is complete without talking about its predecessor, the A300. Look at that, it even shares the same fuselage and nose section as the A330. The A300 was Airbus's first commercial aircraft and was a success worldwide. It served as passenger aircraft mainly on medium haul routes and as a popular freighter including haulers like UPS. Let's go inside the A300 and learn a little more about the A330. This cutaway of the A300 basically shows you the same structure you would encounter inside the A330. Look how well the space is maximized between the passenger space and the cargo hold below. You gain an appreciation of all the load-bearing structures normally hidden behind cabin fittings. With a new wing, fly-by-wire, and lessons learned from the A300 program, Airbus created the A330 and made twin-engine long-haul flying a reality, dominating a huge chunk of the airliner market. If you guys remember back in the early 2000s, Airbus proposed a re-engined A330 and labeled it as the A350 to compete with the 787. But airlines preferred a clean sheet design that was larger and the composite A350 was born. But the A350 clean sheet design outgrew the A330's design segment. So Airbus continued improving the A330 with the new engine option to keep the company competitive in the mid-size wide-body segment. Here are some clips from the Airbus factory tour in Toulouse of the A330 flight line. With NEO aircraft ready for delivery and the new Airbus A330 Beluga. Now we're back on the A330 NEO, this time with mood lighting in this cozy cabin. Not gonna lie, I'm a big fan of the new Airbus airspace interior. And with the plane being only 8 months old, it still smells new. According to Airbus, the NEO is between 12-14% to more efficient than the previous generation. Main changes aside from the engines were aerodynamic improvements to the wings, software updates, and including a center fuel tank to all new aircraft. The graceful winglets look similar to the A350 design adding 3.7 meters or 12 feet to the total wingspan. Basically, the new changes focused on improving the wing's aspect ratio, reducing the drag produced when generating lift, giving the A330 a sleek new look. Now here's more uncut footage of the 330 NEO as we make our way into Frankfurt International Airport. Now let's compare this back to back on the Airbus A330 CEO, the 300 series landing on Amsterdam Schiphol Polderbahn runway 18 right. Be sure to pay attention to this powerful reverser slowing us down on this wet day when the spoilers come up. Overall, I think the Trent 7000 engines on the NEO are a bit quieter, produce less vibration, while making a lower frequency growling hum with this larger fan case, sounding a lot more like the A350 and 787 compared to the A330 CEO. Essentially, the NEO's Trent 7000 is a modified version of the efficient 787 engine, namely to support bleed air systems on the A330. Engineers focus on increasing the bypass ratio, making the main fan bigger and more effective at pulling air. This reduces noise and saves a lot of gas, producing an 11% fuel burn reduction while generating 72,000 pounds of thrust. Let's take a look at the A330 cabin doors. They are pretty light and feels like a minivan door in terms of the force needed to operate them. We'll demonstrate on an A300 at the Toulouse factory which shares the same door design. On the outside, a lever sits flush with the door in flight but can be pulled out to open the door. 
From the inside, to close the door, simply press the black gust lock button to unlock the hinge and slide the door back in place. Pull the big lever down to lock. Arm the doors to activate the slides and you are good to go. Hey guys, I hope you enjoyed this deep dive into the A330. And if you enjoyed this video, hit that like button and subscribe to my channel for more aviation related content.